So I'm going to draw a diagram to show the structure and features of tropical storms. And as part of your revision, it might actually be a good idea if you were to pause this, uh, get a piece of paper and draw it with me at the same time. Um, here we go. Here we have the ocean. And we've already said that the ocean needs to be above 27 degrees C. OK, in terms of the structure of our storm, then we have got rising air coming up off the surface of the ocean rapidly to remind you that's what creates the strong wind speeds and we know that the air rises and spirals as it rises and as it does so it calls condensers to form lots of cloud cover so I'm going to show quite a lot of cloud cover Like this, and that cloud cover extends all the way down to ground level. And the same on this side as well. Storm, lots of clouds as the air rises, cools, condenses. So we've got lots of air rising, cooling, condensing, and forming lots of cloud cover. Okay. In the centre of the storm here, we have the eye. The strongest wind speeds are in the eye wall, either side, so that's part of the structure too. We've then got these deep cumulonimbus clouds. Which can extend in height which can extend 13 kilometres upwards. The actual, um, the actual width of the storm as well, from this point all the way across to this point, can be in the region of around about 300 kilometres wide, maybe even bigger. OK, we also have, because um, remember this is a cross section that I'm drawing, we also have our spiralling winds going in an anti-clockwise direction if we are drawing a storm for the northern hemisphere. If we were drawing this in the southern hemisphere, then it would be, um, it would be rotating in a clockwise direction. But in the northern hemisphere, which is where we live, um, it rotates in an anti-clockwise direction. OK, other couple of things to put on the diagram. In the eye here, we have some sinking air, and that sinking air will give nice, calm, clear conditions. Right, so, to summarise, we have got a height of around about 13 kilometres. That's part of the structure, and it's a feature of the storm. We have a width of up to, uh, and in fact, a little bit more than 300 kilometres across. We have um, an eye in the storm where the conditions are clear and calm and the temperature is actually slightly warmer. We have got lots of cloud. We also have rain bands coming from the cloud. Um, we have got the spin, which is in an anti-clockwise direction. And finally, actually, we have it blowing westwards across the globe at a speed of around about, well, up to, up to 25 kilometres per hour. So that's the structure of the storm. OK, a um, couple of other things to mention. Climate change. How will climate change affect these storms? There's three things that we can look at here. One would be the distribution of storms. Will it affect, will climate change affect the distribution? Secondly, the frequency. That means how often storms happen. And thirdly, um, will it affect the intensity? That means how bad they are, how strong they are. In order to talk through these three things, I'm just going to come back to this diagram underneath. Um, which is our map of the world. And we have said that storms currently exist. I'm just going to draw on a couple of approximate lines for you. 
Storms currently um, form between the tropics, not on the equator because there's no spin, but between the tropics because that's where they're getting their source of heat from. Climate change. If the climate warms up as it currently is, then for, um, for every degree rise, the sea temperature will also rise. That may mean that storms might be able to form slightly further north of where they currently form and maybe slightly further south as the sea temperatures are getting warmer um, up in, in these latitudes where they haven't, uh, they haven't previously been warm. So if the sea is getting warmer, we can expect that maybe the formation of storms might be able to occur a little bit further north and a little bit further south. But it's debatable. It's, um, it's what we think in theory. Secondly, in terms of frequency, we're not really expecting the frequency of storms to change that much with um, global climate change, although we are expecting that the stronger storms, that's the category four and five, storms go from category one to five, we're expecting that the stronger ones, category four and five, will increase in frequency, so we can expect to see more of them with climate change. There is a, um, an expectation, though, that the smaller storms, storms at category one and two, might not be as frequent, so they might actually decrease in frequency. The third thing then about climate change is the intensity and I've just mentioned the stronger storms we're going to expect to see more often, the weaker storms we will see less of um, and that really covers the effects of climate change. Okay.